So, uh, the Book of Boba Fett really has zero interest in being a Boba Fett show, doesn't it? Hello, Intubabs. I am here to review the latest episode of Star Wars, The Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 6, From the Desert Comes a Stranger. And I'll stay spoiler-free up front, but uh, I'm going to have to be honest with you that I'm going to have to get into spoilers pretty quickly, given that, like, the major plot of this episode is the biggest spoiler about it. Like I said in the opening joke of this video, this show really has zero interest in being a Boba Fett show, doesn't it? Like, I kid you not, Boba Fett is literally in one scene in this episode, and he has zero lines. So in a show quite literally called The Book of Boba Fett, Boba Fett has had zero lines and had one scene within two episodes. And it really just goes to show me that it really feels like this series was much more interested in just tying up loose ends with Boba Fett, like saying like, all right, here's how he got from the Sarlacc pit to where he was in the Mandalorian. And now that we've dealt with that, and now that we've dealt with that story, we don't really care what happens to him. We just want to kind of wrap it all up. And we have this sort of present day storyline going on so that we can get to what we're more interested in, which is telling the Mandalorian story and focusing on the stuff with Mandalorian. Cause this is really just feeling at this point, like a mini season 2.5 of the Mandalorian as well as tying in some stuff from the like greater Star Wars universe, especially the animated and comics verse that has very rarely gotten put into live action. Because really, this episode, without getting into specifics, just has cameos and appearances from basically all corners of the Star Wars universe. And this, this just really shows me that this show is just really trying to be a Mando 2.5 and has very little interest in Boba Fett beyond just tying up narrative loose ends that his character had dangling, given that it's sort of assumed that Mandalorian was originally going to be a Boba Fett show, but then they made an original character, which then means they had to tie up the loose ends with Boba Fett. And now they're doing that, and now they're done with him. And it's just kind of frustrating, because I was intrigued by Boba Fett, but this show just has stopped caring, and as a result, so have I, stopped caring about the character that I ostensibly came to this show for and is in the title of the series. All that being said, I kind of have to, like, accept that at this point, because I take that, and then I look at what the episode is, and I have to say, this was freaking cool. As a Star Wars nerd who has seen every episode of the anime series, has read a lot of the books and comics, just seeing some of the stuff that happened in here, one character in particular who does show up, just had me nerding out, and it was badass and awesome. So, like... On one hand, my Star Wars nerd is freaking out because this is actually legitimately good storytelling, filling in gaps in the series, and bringing me characters that I've really wanted to see. And on the other hand, it just does not care to deliver on what it was actually supposed to deliver and what I was ostensibly interested in for four or five episodes before this happened. And so it's just this weird push and pull that I'm feeling because I loved this. This was great. I enjoyed it. It was just weird that it's happening in a Boba Fett show. It's just strange. And I guess I just get it. It really just feels like this is just meant to be set up for other stuff that they had nowhere else to put it. So they're like, all right, we'll shove it into this Boba Fett miniseries to get people to come in and watch it. It really just feels like that. It really just feels like they made it book of Boba Fett so that people would watch the show and then get all the like trailers for these other series and interesting stuff for other shows that they got going on and set people off into those universes instead of actually focusing on Boba Fett. And it's kind of disappointing. But ultimately, I also got to be honest and say that my Star Wars nerd loved it. So that's my spoiler free thoughts. Let's get into spoilers because I have a lot to talk about here. I don't even know really where to begin with this. I guess what we have to begin is that we start off with Mando going to visit Grogu. And we got something I did not expect. I did not expect us to actually get to see Grogu. I figured we'd go back to Boba and we'd focus on Mando. But Mando goes to this planet that Luke Skywalker is on. And we actually get to see Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill himself, training Grogu. And this was, again, this was not what I expected. Not what I thought I wanted out of the show, but I also loved it. And I have to say, first and foremost, the Mark Hamill, like, de-aging digital face thing they got going on looks much better here than it did in the series finale, uh, or season finale of season two of Mando. It still got a little bit off-putting at moments, but overall, I was like, oh, wow, this is really solid work. Uh, I really 
for a lot of moments, bought like, oh yeah, this is like Mark Hamill at that age. They've definitely improved it. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better than most. And I loved all the sequences with Grogu being taught by Luke and just the small little things that you get to see the adorableness of it with like Luke like hopping uh, Grogu with him uh, with the force was just cute. And then moments where Luke is like learning how to be a teacher and like showing Grogu how to like use the force, like teaching him how to jump um, and also sort of evoking Luke uh, carrying Grogu in the backpack like he... Uh, did with Yoda all the, that long ago. It is it is like nostalgia and it's like sort of very clearly evoking that nostalgia, but in a way that recontextualizes it for Luke being a sort of teacher now for Grogu. The in Everything is flipped for Luke and he's sort of dealing with that and also Grogu is dealing with him sort of learning about the Force and being kind of not, uh, not fully getting there completely at the moment. And so while it is nostalgia, I think it's really wonderfully recontextualized here, and I just thought that that was very cool. And then I liked, on the other hand, Mando uh, sort of arriving and getting to talk with Ahsoka. We got to see uh, Ahsoka Tano, my favorite character in all of Star Wars here. Um, you know, setting aside my issues, setting aside my um, complex feelings about Rosario Dawson uh, that I've spoken about in other videos on my main channel, I, I really loved seeing Ahsoka here. It, it, she's one of my favorite characters, and I loved, like, little hints and things that she said, like, I'm a friend of the family, or when she's talking to Luke, she says, you know, just like your father. I, I, getting that sense of history that we have with the character and linking the anime universe with like the stuff that we've always seen in in Star Wars the like Luke Skywalker of it all and I just the connecting of all these different parts of this Star Wars universe between all these characters Mando Luke Grogu and Ahsoka was really nice to see and I loved her talk with Gro uh, with Mando and they're saying, you know, if he sees you, Grogu's going to become attached to you. And the Jedi sort of are supposed to give up attachment. Now, that is bullshit. I really think that that was one thing that the Jedi should, like, Luke Skywalker recreating the Jedi should have done away with. Because that was the thing that led to Anakin Skywalker sort of becoming Darth Vader. And so I'm kind of frustrated that Luke's perpetuating that very thing that caused this problem. But I understand what they're trying to set up in terms of conflict at the end of the episode, which I, I do actually really like. And so it was a very sweet moment where Mando had to confront, like, he wants to see Grogu and he really cares about him. And it was just very sweet. And he just was like, no, I got to do this for Grogu. And so he was willing to just give him the armor um, and, without actually seeing him. And it was very, you could sense how difficult that was for a choice for um, Din, but it was it was played really well and I, I just thought it was actually very excellent storytelling um and then to wrap out the storyline i really liked at the end of the episode we do get that sort of choice for grogu where he says you know you have to pick going to mando or you have to pick the lightsaber and he offers him yoda's lightsaber um i do probably think that grogu is going to pick going with mando and so he's going to be in mando season three um but it it's a tough choice because we kind of want to see him be the new yoda and so i like that this episode sort of evokes yoda and, and contextualizes is Yoda and, and sort of the Yoda presence for Grogu is like the specter hanging over Grogu's head and the path that we expect him to follow. And I like that it's like, no, but he's going to choose something else. He's not going to be a new Yoda. He's not going to be baby Yoda. Um, and I just thought that that was a really clever subversion of our expectations for this character. Uh, I, I thought it was really wonderfully done, to be kind of honest with you. Going back to uh, Tatooine, though, we do have uh, some really decent stuff going on here outside of Boba Fett, because apparently this show doesn't care about him anymore. But we do get to see uh, the Marshal from season two of Mandalorian show up here. And I love seeing the like big, uh, the, 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 the head that they sort of, of the monster they killed on the Jawa ship earlier. And I liked, and we, I like that we see the Marshal sort of defending his territory and being a thorn in the Pike side. And then Mando going to him to sort of get a, an army for, um, for, uh, Boba Fett to help fight the Pikes. Uh, we're starting, I at least appreciate that we're starting to see the Pikes be a bit more of a threat, but it's honestly at this point a little bit too little too late because um, at the end of the episode they do blow up the bar that we've been seeing this entire episode, but that should have happened back in like episode three or four. It should not be happening in the penultimate episode. The Pikes are just sort of here and they're just a threat to deal with. And so while I appreciate them being uh, built up here, uh, it, it would have been much more appreciated earlier. And so now they're just a thing that we're dealing with as opposed to like an actual feeling of a threat that we have going on. But that being said, I do like Mando appealing to the Marshal, and I like their sort of um, uh, friendship together, like uh, Mando, uh, but like the Marshal sort of having like this sort of geek out moment about the Naboo Starfighter, and Mando buying him a drink, and, and them sort of commiserating together, and Mando convincing him to come help, even though he's a little bit on the fence about it. But then we get the coolest moment in the episode, bar none, because out of the desert strides Cad freaking Bane. 
I did not expect to see Cad Bane in a live action Star Wars show. And I have to say, he looks fantastic. I was I was a bit worried if they were gonna do this like it was this, like they're gonna have that giant hat that he has in animated uh, the animated show. So I'm glad they shortened the hat. But when he like you see his teeth and he looks up and he has those eyes, I'm like that's Cad Bane, and it sounds like him too. I think my only knock against the makeup because the makeup looks great. I think my only knock against it is his mouth is a little bit tight. He just kind of has like a snarl face, uh, whereas in the uh, animated show his face is a little less scrunched up. And so I assume that probably has to do with like the fact that this actor has to wear like the teeth and the mouth at the same time. Um, so I I kind of understand that being one of the limitations of it but other than that the eyes and the look of this d design of him in live action looks fantastic uh and his voice just sounds perfect too and badass moment where he just stares down the marshal stares down the other guy and kills them both and says pikes on this land and you're gonna come with us or you're gonna have to deal with me and so that setting him into this episode that is what i'm more interested in i could care less about the pikes but cad bane facing off against all of our characters next episode that I am excited to see. That I'm fairly pumped up about. Um, I just wish, again, it had come earlier, but the moment with Cad Bane was pretty badass. So that kind of wraps out all my thoughts on this episode. As you can kind of tell, I think there's some really strong storytelling going on here. There's amazing moments, moments that I did not see, expect to see in Star Wars. It, again, this connecting of so many different aspects of the Star Wars universe to tell this story, I think is really cool. Cad Bane, Luke Skywalker, Ahsoka Tano, Mando, Boba Fett, all of it's in one episode. And I never thought we would see something that disparate in a single Star Wars live action story. And it was so cool. But it's not a Boba Fett show. <laughs> and it weirds me out. So I don't even know what to say about it. I, I loved it. I really did. So taking it on its own terms, I loved it. It's just very clear where the actual interests of the writers of this show were. That they really did not care about Boba Fett at all outside of just having him tie up some loose ends in the sort of larger expanded universe stuff. Other than that, they could give two craps about him, and this is just a expanded universe Star Wars story. And it's just very clear that's what it is, and I, I'm not against it. I just feel like I'm not being given what I was sold, and it's ultimately making the story that I was supposed to be interested in, that I had seen for four episodes, just seem like something that was supposed to be like, eh, we don't give a crap. So I was like, well, okay, why did I waste those four hours of my time then? This, If you wanted to do this, do this the entire time. But don't waste my four hours of time before then. <sighs> so, that being said, what did you think about it? I'd love to hear your thoughts about it down in the comments below. Did you hate it? Did you love it? Are you thinking I'm being way over top with my frustration? Um, I'd love to hear all of that down below. But beyond that, thanks so much for joining me. I will see you next time. Until then, live long and prosper.